Hello my strong strong friends. Today I am a one week postpartum. So I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update and talk a little bit about the fitness side, <laughs> which that might sound funny if you've heard anything about postpartum recovery and returning to exercise. Yeah, we'll talk about that today and also kind of show you my progress, my body. I never knew what to expect from healing postpartum. So we'll talk about that today. And yeah, today I'm gonna get in a crazy workout. If you're new here, hi, my name's Meg. I just had a baby, obviously, one week ago. I am a strength coach and I'm also a certified pre and postnatal coach. I've been talking about training during pregnancy and now we are conquering the postpartum world. So let me show you. I was able to put on makeup today and do my hair a little bit, <laughs> which hasn't happened, but um, also I match. Let's see if I can get a good enough reflection view. So this is what we're working with. Um, all in all, I had no idea what to expect postpartum. Like I had no idea what my body would look like, but obviously, insert picture of me pregnant. Um, I was a lot bigger. <laughs> a couple days after giving birth, I was still pretty big. I looked up to be about like six months pregnant. So this is where I am one week after. I don't know if I'll continue like losing mass in this area, but we'll just see. So this is where I'm at one week. I kind of just want to share like not that a body check is the most important thing or like even for many people a healthy thing that you should be doing <laughs> um, but I personally feel confident enough to do a body check and I'm just interested in understanding how my body will change I was surprised to see that my skin at least on the outside is pretty taut I'm definitely really weak my core is really weak and I can feel that so that's cool. Usually postpartum postpartum recovery goals will be to close the gap. So I have not done a check for diastasis recti, which most pregnant people will have some diastasis at the end of pregnancy at least. So I haven't done a check for that. I'll probably wait six weeks to do that just because it's probably inevitable so it doesn't make sense to check it and progress when i haven't fully healed internally that's my body check and here's the star of the show she's awake and has some hiccups Aww. hey should we do a progress report for you baby i am paranoid <laughs> completely unnecessary to buy something like this but of course i did so let's weigh baby emmy and see how she's doing come here baby also, um, when you have a human to take care of, your plants will probably die, so they're not doing well. Okay, baby, come here. Let's see, have you gained weight? <laughs> Might be skewed, because I think she needs to change. <laughs> but let's see, how you doing? This is not comfy for you. <gasps> Look how good she's doing. Look at my baby, she's gaining weight. Seven and six ounces, we'll call it. Okay, let me get out of there. I can't stand to see you like this. I gotta show you guys this little onesie that my friend Molly sent us from Girls Gone Strong. She's the founder of Girls Gone Strong, which is the prenatal, one of the prenatal certifications that I took. And she sent us this. Baby Emerald has already spit up on it, but um, I'm told that that's kind of just what happens, <laughs> but I will link this down below because they have a bunch of cute like little baby onesies that are lifting related. How cute. Okay, I'm ready for my very intense workout. <laughs> so I'm pulling this from my plus one, the postpartum program. So I do have this option if you're postpartum or pregnant and interested in understanding how to return to exercise and how to basically return to upright movement eventually. And so this does start at, you know, immediately postpartum. The thing is, you know, you usually hear the blanket statement to wait six weeks. Um, usually that's when your doctor clears you for exercise, but that's blanket. It doesn't consider any individual. Everyone is given that unless there is you know, something else to consider. So some people might need more time. Some people might do fine with less. We take a four phase approach to 
a return to exercise and don't actually incorporate upright movement until like week five and even then the upright movement is very chill the thing is you don't just return to exercise and go back to what you were doing when you were 38 weeks pregnant or whatever or before you were pregnant you do kind of want to ease and you might have a better outcome with preparing your body for a return to exercise this is what the program looks like if you end up you know joining and we do have you know just an introduction kind of talks about who i am um, and my certifications how to navigate the course and then we have educational videos one of the most important ones is to take a moment and i will just tell you now as the writer of this program i did not do anything until maybe like day five and let me tell you this workout <laughs> It's not much, it's just breathing. So the weeks zero to two, the workout is to practice 10 connection breaths and you can do one set or two sets. I've been doing them in the shower, I've been doing them in bed, you can even do them while breastfeeding. But I will say those first five days postpartum, I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking about my pelvic floor and considering how it felt. So I was just naturally kind of doing the connection breath without like recording sets, feeling out how my pelvic floor felt after a vaginal delivery and some tearing. The focus in stage one in the four stage return to exercise is breathing so this is the entirety of the workout i want you to rest as much as possible you can do one to two sets of 10 connection breaths per day and you can walk if you're feeling up to it 10 minutes once or twice per day if you're feeling good that's it's breathing breathing and sinking your breath back with your pelvic floor and your inner core unit and exploring how that feels postpartum so that's been something again that i haven't really like made a point to schedule time in because it's going to be really hard to schedule anything in for yourself if i'm able to take a shower if i've been laying down while breastfeeding i learned how to do the laying down <laughs> while breastfeeding pose today or a position today which mm -hmm. is a game changer i think and i haven't done any walking so maybe today we could do a walk today Might later this day. afternoon yeah. which will be really exciting but again i'm seven days postpartum and you know this is not it's not it's, a race either. You it's know? not a race and you're going to have a baby who's going to have a lot to say about what you plan to do with exercise. Yeah, that's the stage one. That's mm -hmm. my workout. Yeah, you can see my little demo there. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not very, that demo is not very helpful. So let me point you to my three part series about the connection breath if that is a completely foreign thing to you. But I'll give you a quick recap of how to do it right now. Okay, so here's a quick and dirty tutorial of the connection breath. Also, this is called diaphragmatic breathing, but basically we're connecting the pelvic floor with our inhale and exhale so on the exhale you want to contract the pelvic floor on the inhale you want to very gently because now you're postpartum very gently lengthen or just return to resting tone of your pelvic floor if you're having a hard time with understanding the sensation of contracting the pelvic floor versus lengthening or returning to rest then there are a couple of ways to think about it. I have a lot of cues in the extended video on how you can, like there's probably 20 <laughs> analogies for understanding that. But basically, if you think about the sensation of like stopping a stream of urine, that is a sensation of a pelvic floor contraction. And in the postpartum phase, at least for me in this first week, I have noticed it's sore when I need to stop my flow of urine. So these connection breaths or this diaphragmatic breathing exercise will be super uh, gentle, like really, really gentle. Not something where I'm like really tightening the pelvic floor. I'm just connecting the breath. So it's very gentle. I'm not like <laughs> trying to really flex my pelvic floor right now. All we're doing is one to two sets of 10 connection breaths however you want to do it. So it would look a little something like this, just me sitting here breathing, but you could try to think about expanding your ribs outward on the inhale. 
and those come back on the exhale and then your pelvic floor comes up. You think about that sensation of stopping your urine, the pelvic floor draws in and up. If you have no idea how to do it, I would suggest watching that three-part series that I have on YouTube already. And that will also cover those pelvic floor sensation cues, how to get a feel for the contraction, how to get a feel for lengthening it. Another thing that I wanna add here is the position that you choose will maybe make it harder to feel. So if you're standing, if you're upright or sitting upright, it might be a little harder than if you could try side lying. You could try side lying while you're breastfeeding. <laughs> Just make sure that you're paying attention to the baby. So you could try this position, side lying. You could try supine with feet on the floor or even get crazy and try 90-90 breathing. So I can already feel that's a little harder of a position just for me to get into. So, you know, it's I'm only seven days postpartum. <laughs> Maybe that's something that I want to incorporate in week two. Um, and don't need to worry about it. I'm still doing the ninja roll <laughs> to get up. But yeah, that's the workout. You can do it whenever you can. And really we're just connecting the pelvic floor and starting to get a feel for the sensation of what it feels like before we even think about doing any exercise. Whether you had a vaginal delivery or a C-section, your pelvic floor did go through a lot during pregnancy. So regardless of what camp you're in, you can benefit from incorporating this at this stage of pregnancy or postpartum, sorry. You may have noticed my shirt. So we did some Buff Chick merch. So we, had a, we have a little Buff Chick summer theme you can go to I can almost see it. Hold on. Camp Buffy and take flight. <laughs> I love there this shirt, it's so cute. Our team did such an awesome job putting this together. I was so happy with it. And then we have this one, and then let me show you, Ryan. Supermodel. Ryan has on the raglan, which is so cute with the buff chick blue, and then Buffy on the background. These come out on Monday, so. The, the 19th, so these might be already out by the time this video is live. Yeah. These are so cute. These are unisex too. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a large. Yeah. But we have extra so small to do. Ryan's in a large, and you know, he just went through pregnancy himself too. Yeah, I'm um, a dad bod. <laughs> but we also are launching these with a few new products. So we have flavored creatine is our new product um, in the icy blue raspberry, which was one of our most popular flavors for pre and pump. So we're restocking pre and pump in icy blue ras, and then adding a new product, flavored creatine, um, in icy blue rise flavor. So if you want to check, too, pump is new too? Oh yeah, pump is new. We didn't do a pump and we only had a pre in icy blue rise. But yeah, so that is all new stuff that's coming on Buff Chick supplements. This video is about like postpartum. So anytime I post about our supplements, people always ask what is safe for pregnancy. And the recommendation is always to check with your doctor. Always check with your doctor. However, I do not recommend just generally taking pre or pump or like extra stimulants. The only stimulant I'd really recommend taking that I took personally throughout my entire pregnancy was caffeine. That was a necessity. So that is a stimulant, but I wouldn't recommend any of even our pre or posts if you're breastfeeding or pregnant. But always check with your doctor if you know, you're interested in taking some kind of supplement. However, I will say we will be coming out with protein very soon. And one of the most common questions that I get is, hey, can I have uh, powdered protein when I'm pregnant or breastfeeding? And the biggest thing there is that you want to make sure that you're buying from a brand that you can trust. And Buff Chick, of course, we do third-party testing on every single product. Everything before we go to market is third-party tested so that you know what's on the label is what's inside the product. There's no contamination, everything has been tested, and you can kind of trust the brand and their products a little bit more. So if I were pregnant, I would ensure that whatever brand I went with did third-party testing, some kind of third-party testing, so that you know you're getting what they're saying is in the product and you know that there's no banned substances or um, anything like that in your products. So that's my spiel. Check out buffchick.com if you're interested in it. Oh, and we also have these cute bandanas. I'll insert a picture of what they look like, <laughs> but they're so cute. They have our little buff chick, like handwritten pattern. They're adorable. And when you roll them up, you can kind of 
only see the stars um, if you like to wear bandanas like this on your head, like me. Okay, uh, what do I do now? My baby's asleep. What do I do with myself? <sighs> Maybe I'll prepare to go on my first walk. First walk today, we can do it. It'll be under 10 minutes long. How exciting. <laughs> So I just scarfed down some food, but I have to show you this. <laughs> Sorry I didn't show you the meal that I actually had, but my sister-in-law, she's unbelievable and amazing. And if you, uh, maybe if you're pregnant, um, do this for yourself for when you're about to have the baby, or if you know someone who's about to have a baby, this is better than any gift that I received. <laughs> so she prepped us a bunch of different kinds of meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let me show you, I've already, we've had a week of eating like pretty much nothing but what she's got for us and Uber Eats. <laughs> but she prepped us these little mini frittatas. She also made these amazing cornbread muffins. There's those Uber Eats. Um, yeah, they're like pancake muffins. They are so freaking good. They either have fruit or Nutella in them. And then she made us a chicken bake. That's what I just had, chicken, broccoli, and rice. Um, and all of them are just frozen and whenever you're ready to eat, just thaw. And then, hold on, I have more. There was lasagna. We scarfed that down, Oh, we? yeah, we ate the lasagna with the quickness, honey. Yeah, that was number one. <laughs> I thought for sure the lasagna was gonna last longer than what it did. It but, was one sitting. <laughs> um, next, she also made us these bagged soups. So there's white chicken chili, or no, chicken chili, and then a, yeah, I was right, white chicken chili, and then a soup. So I'm gonna actually, defrost these maybe overnight um, over the next few days and then just throw them in the crock pot to eat um, next so it has been a true game changer meaning i haven't had to really cook anything and i haven't had to wash like big annoying dishes that you can't pots put in the dishwasher pots and pans and stuff like that so so nice of her i would suggest prepping that for yourself or asking someone who loves you like my sister-in-law loves us. <laughs> I would definitely highly recommend doing something like that if you have the time to prep. If you don't, Uber Eats is just a click away. <laughs> okay, we are doing it. We're going on a walk. I'm ready. We're basically going to um, pretty much walk up and down the driveway <laughs> in front of the house. I'm not gonna go too far. I've heard just one, not horror story, but I've heard a story of someone who said she felt really good like a week or so after, after giving birth and she decided to go on a walk with her husband and she was dying. <laughs> not literally, but she just realized like, oh, now I have to walk back up this hill and I, over I underestimated my ability. So I'm probably just gonna walk down my driveway and maybe you do a lap of the driveway yeah i might do a lap or two of the driveway and not really going to add too much pressure but look how cute ryan looks we need little baby sunnies for her it's going too bright look. it's too bright she looks like carlos <laughs> he's got the little movie i thought this was so funny because these look like those really popular the bandy bikini sports bra things. yeah they look exactly like it okay so let's go on our walk okay the last thing i want to show my walk was pretty good really really slow <laughs> really really slow pace but i do feel like eh, i could probably lay down for not the rest of the day but lay down for a little while and just chill out but i want to show you before i log off my i feel like it looks the light looks better like this i want to show you my bathroom <laughs> So let me close the toilet. So I knew very little, AKA nothing about postpartum recovery essentials and like what you'll need or want to have at home. Luckily, if you know nothing and you're expecting to have a baby, the nurses or hopefully the midwives, wherever you deliver, they'll teach you all of that like immediately after you give birth because they'll want you to pee eventually. So they'll help you with that. But if you want to stock up, 
at home um, or you're just curious, let me show you. So this is my like little toilet room. <laughs> um, it's kind of nice because I can have a room that has storage right next to the toilet. And here's all of my stuff. Um, I should really get in the habit of closing that, but so exciting. After one week, I've been able to transition out of wearing these beautiful, what are these called? Okay, they're called diapers. <laughs> these are basically like, these are the always discreet underwear. So in case you leak or anything, you don't get blood on your underwear. So luckily my bleeding has slowed down enough to where I don't need these, but when I first got home and at the hospital, I was wearing the equivalent of something like this and then a pad inside of that. So I got these always ultra thin, um, but they're the most absorbent with wings and they're super long and they kind of fit that whole thing. I will say at the hospital, they give you instead of this option, they gave me mesh underwear that kind of look like this and they're more comfortable than that. But then I wore this big diaper looking thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm done with these options and now I'm just wearing big kind of postpartum underwear that I bought that are high-waisted and they're what I was wearing earlier today. They're high-waisted and they're not like my, you know, nice underwear. Anyway, so that's what goes inside of my underpants. When, every time I go to the bathroom, I use this Perry bottle to wash away my pee. This is honestly so, so relieving. This is like one of the most, like going to the bathroom kind of sucks, but the, care after going to the bathroom is really relieving for my vagina okay <laughs> so this is the frida peri bottle they do give you a peri bottle at the hospital but this one is a hundred times better so if you can have this at home i would recommend buying the frida peri bottle for sure so you wash away <laughs> Then you dab with toilet paper after like getting yourself washed off. And then you use this stuff, Dermaplast. Make sure it's the pain, burn, and itch, not any other Dermaplast. But oh my God, this is so, so nice and so relieving. It's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> and then I will put these tux pads. They're just medicated cooling wipes with like witch hazel on them. I put those inside my pad. Uh, and that is my kind of care. I did get this Earth Mama perineal spray and also this perineal balm. I haven't started using this because I think the Dermaplast is just too good to ditch and switch over to something that I don't know will be as relieving. Yeah, that is really my whole setup. I will say, make sure to have a few of these for when you come home. I highly recommend this and the Tux cooling pads. Obviously you wanna have some pads and options for that, but yeah, that's been kind of my life saver. <laughs> okay, so that is all for my video. I hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing what my workout is and also some what I'm up to and yeah, how I'm doing in very, very early postpartum, just one week postpartum today. So feeling good and feeling in high spirits. I'm still in a little bit of pain. I have sort of weaned off the pain meds. I'm not really taking anything. I was just taking ibuprofen, like a high dose ibuprofen. And I had some hydrocodone <laughs> prescribed to me, but I'm always careful with that to um, not depend on it. And a stool softener. A stool softener, yes. I have been taking that and will continue taking that until I'm in less pain, just because I don't want to be constipated and I do not want my stool to be hard to pass. You know what I mean? TMI, I know, but if you're yourself postpartum or if you're pregnant, <laughs> you're probably used to talking about a lot of these things and you don't mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want to check out Plus One, that's my postpartum program. I have prenatal and postpartum. That's what I'll be following. That's what I followed all throughout my pregnancy and I loved it and I had such a good time and I feel like being, being fit and keeping up my fitness just made for a happier pregnancy for me and also one that 
didn't have as much pain. I feel like I would have been in a little bit more pain and discomfort had I not kept that up. Obviously I have nothing else to compare it to because this is my first baby, but that's just what I think <laughs> and what I can assume. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>